Hello, it's Care Brick Bot again, and like any good combining toy line, Iron Knight, Raiden also combined bots. Not just a head, but also two of them and four of them at a time. Yeah, I guess I'm just looking at the one that's a combination of Pulis and Long Arm. Armor Raiden. Not sure how the Chinese name goes. Yeah, but this is armor combination, and then two knights into one. Yeah, it's still pretty much a very big one, like the name, the armor writing name on the bottom here. That still doesn't look very good, that very upscaled, pixeled head. Yeah, there's a nice metallics, and then red and red and blue techno combination. Iron Knights, Long Arm Captain, and Police Car Transform, and then there's Police. And there's the, the CG illustration right on the backdrop here. This other side has another here, and then the animation models of the car and copter. Oh, yeah, and signature carrying handle for most Chinese toys, but Korean toys usually don't have these, so, uh, unless they're like more like the playset stuff, but yeah, but a giant box carrying handle. Yep, super massive tray. Super massive thin box that's already creasing on there. Already creasing. The super massive floppy display stand I just slapped in the back and I'm not sure how much weight this can hold like this. Not like this. And then the giant plastic insert that's eh, that's kind of holding better on its own weight but that's still somewhat floppy. Yeah, okay, okay you want to rely on that. These backdrops, as flimsy as they are, at least have a good style. Like, on the back, you have the specific robot modes. Like, for these, just the uh, combined pairs. That extends to over here. And then, you know, the big computer backdrop with the two combiners on the side. This got a little crease, though, so... Uh... Armor Raiden very much looks like... Literally the lower half of Strike Pulis and the upper half of Hurricane Longarm. I mean, they look very similar. So I mean, maybe that's a little annoying because they do kind of look like they could just combine these individual toys. Could combine, maybe just detach the upper and lower half and just swap them together. Yeah, but this is one of those Chinese trends where the combined toy is sold separately and it, it is engineered different so that they're only the upper and lower halves. Maybe this is a bit annoying because this is not like Tobot where they do a complete total structural color change. I mean, these are the exact same legs and thighs as the Strike Fullers and the exact same shoulders and chest in design, that is. I mean, the engineering is slightly different. Yeah, and then these arms, these arms are actually the legs of the helicopter. So, of course, that's a bit of a size difference. And also just relocating the entire arms and kind of completely making these individual robot arms vanish. Yeah, but I guess it looks pretty magical or imaginary. Just imagine, like, the entire halves of the body just shrink and compress into these. Like, can you imagine how... It's the same vehicle shape, but this it has enough space for the entire upper torso and the arms, but it just it's all that's all hidden away in this combined mode. Like yeah, where did the arms go? Where did the torso go on this thing? Yeah, you just like just it's just it's just hips from here. Very long hips. And the big skirt flap. For accessories, he comes with the exact same weapons as Strike Pulis. Which, they look like to be the exact same size as the single figure's accessories. Despite being a slightly bigger vehicle, they look like the exact same size. I think the same that goes for the helicopter rotors, like, long arms helicopter rotors. All that exact same, I mean, I guess that's a clever reuse, but for slightly bigger figures? Yeah, so you could just... Yeah, put the sh shoulder guns, these are shoulder guns, 
when they were arm guns for strike bullets and then slightly bigger mitts to hold the gun, to hold the little pistol here. Maybe at the right angle, it's at a slightly better grip. Insert the helicopter rotors in here. Okay, maybe they're slightly loose because I'm using the slightly different one. So you can attach the helicopter rotor on the back like this. I guess, yeah, just for a big splayed out look. Official configuration actually has you put it on one of the shoulder holes here. Then just kind of splay them off to the side. So this is some sort of stylized asymmetrical look, like side wings. And the head, it's the exact same head as the single Pulis figure, down to the same size. It's the exact same. Just, yeah, transform it. You can transform it the exact same way. It's the exact same thing. Exact same part forming. Down to not exactly connecting just to the back. You need the butt plug. It's all the same, except maybe this one's eyes are wonkier. Oh yeah, if you want to see how that looks with long arms head. Just yeah, that's a different style, I guess. I guess the blue here is just because he's the main lead character and also that kind of alternates the pattern color, the color pattern. For articulation, it, it's a head swivel, the friction shoulder joints, that doesn't have much butterfly, outward shoulder that much, obtuse elbow bend, bicep swivel, opening fingers, and then the wrist swivel, and then the sword wielding wrist sorts. Frictioned waist swivel, upper waist. For that much, if you can get the skirt flap out of the way. And then back that much with the skirt flap in there. Full splits with the side skirt splitting out. And then the double knee. And then some sort of hydraulic piston system going there. Faux system, it's it, that's just loose. While the ratcheted foot carries it, and then ball socket down, forward, toe bend, ankle tilt. Yeah, so I, you, you would expect mostly the same articulation like of lower strike pulleys and upper long arm. If theoretically these are meant to be the same size, just slightly bigger but still the same scale, then I'm still a bit of a loss at exactly what kind of scale this is. Yeah, it's maybe closer to, to bigger than normal cars. Now to split them back in two. Yeah, so that's how it connects this sort of clip system. Yeah, so the nose cones transform slightly differently. This is a double hinge, which is a bit more coherent. Hinge that out, hinge that out. 90 degree torso. Just kind of flex it in there. And then hinge here, hinge here. And then, yeah, just pull back. Ratchet out, ratchet, oops, wait, it's hinged here, but I just, that just really easy to pop off, like, you know, plastic hinges, heh. <laughs> Looks like you just double hinge that down, and then, I guess the hands are just off to the side like this. Then, yeah, clip that in. After much strangling and mangling, I still can't get that in. Yeah, I just, this is just a whole, whole solid plastic crack, and... There are no cutting nubs. There are no cut nubs where, you know, the plastic hinges could easily slide in. I just cut myself. Yeah, this just tabs in and then tab there. Landing gear down. Rotor in place. Hinge. So this is a long arm copter that is specifically part of Arbor Raiden with half a tail fin because I just cannot get this back on. And I'm just borrowing, just, I'm just splitting the rotors between the two versions. It's close enough, right? And this is a friction rotor that is a detachable piece, so this is no free spinning either. So that's a disappointing for a helicopter toy. 
I mean, yeah, they do look very similar, don't they? Yeah, just slightly bigger cockpit there. Although, yeah, the combined mode's a bit more cohesive, you know, since you don't have, like, thick legs here. And also, that entire leg section is basically inverted. Yeah, you know, the vent section was here, and also much longer, while the vent section is right up here, and also much more truncated. Yeah, that's the bottom of the helicopter now, while this is the top, so... That's a total 180, literally, on which mode you, the form informs it. I think the landing gear holds up here much better than on this one. As with the nose code. And then for the poolist legs, there is this additional yellow strip here. I suppose it's just a handle or just extra width extender. Yeah, so this does transform in a similar way, like the three fold. Okay, you can get the leg together, kind of fold those in. It's still hinge here. I suppose you can collapse these legs in so that they actually, yeah, just close up here and then figure out how that hinge, like, lines up with the rest of the torso here. Like, sliding legs. Why do I forget the sliding legs? And then that should click right here and here. Yeah, so these are additional little flaps that come out of there. Little fold-out bumper here. Double hinge forward. Double hinge that, and then kind of line it up there. Figure out how to line that up. Yeah, this is so fiddly. Because, yeah, this should line up with this. Oh, that's very snappy. Double hinge the front hood so that it kind of goes over like that, and then just kind of align the tabs here. Align the tabs, align the tabs. And then if you can align this too, yeah, just little square tabs right here that you can just kind of slot in. But despite the looks, yeah, you slide tabs under there for the top hood. And then still have to finesse this. Still have to finesse the front wheels. How do I do this? How does this work? Square tab right here. Okay, there we go. Then you just line up the bumper. Yeah, that's still collapsible. And then tiny little holes here to tap the bumpers in. Tiny little hole. Then a bumper right behind. Okay, I think this is just about done. And then yeah, the weapons go here. And then with the Pulis car, again, I'm splitting the weapons between them because I, I can. And then, where'd the light bar go? I don't know why the white wire misplaced it. I'll just give it to him. Yep. That's the exact same light bar piece, too. Yes, they are very similar in size. This thing is just a tiny bit bigger. I guess it's a tiny bit longer. The separate plastics for the front bumper, at least. And it's also a bit much more wide. Yeah, this front section has been stretched out a bit. Yeah, the entire front section has been stretched out a bit. And this single window piece is really stretched out. And as you see, there is this extra yellow strip that's been added here. Just really splits it. While this is, you know, much more natural looking. You just have this thing in the middle. So I guess it just needs to be that much bit wider to turn into pants. The wheels are the exact same as with the mud guards. Like okay, these are slightly bigger on this one, you know, which it there seems to be a lot of shared parts between them with the new tooling. 
So this is an interesting set. Just it, it's a common practice, you know, to buy a combiner set that's only the combined mode, only the vehicle mode. But maybe I'm a little disappointed this wasn't an all-in-one. Just buy one, and you have enough parts to make a combiner, a two-part combiner. Instead of you just have to buy the combiner separately, which is this is like nearly 80, 70 to 80, which is a bit of a steep thing to get for just combiners. I mean, because, because they share the same design style, it's just kind of hard to believe. But, you know, on the other hand, you know, the case for, you know, making combiners separate so that they can be dedicated so they have less parts than they already have, you know, especially for these, these ionized right which already have a lot of intricate parts and that are also, you have to kind of really pull and twist and finagle, especially these skirt flaps. Skirt flaps. Yeah, so even if those individual ones, like in theory, if there were individual bots that could do the all-in-one, then that would have to do parts for me, essentially, to, in order to get the combinations that look like this, like just removable arms, removable torsos, removable skirt flaps, removable kibble. And then you, you just leave them off the side, but at least you can kind of just assemble them all together. Yeah, so imagine, but on the other hand, imagine how much engineering that would go into. So that's really, really had to make it a much more of an adult collectible while this feels like an older kid's collectible. So imagine this thing that has to be like a three in one, a single bot, a upper torso, and a single arm. This thing could also be a single arm. Yeah, but that that would be too much, dude. So, you know, some in some cases, it's better to have it separate, but also you see that the size is very similar, but not exactly. Some are slightly bigger, so maybe I would have liked it to be consistently scaled, but on the other hand, I might confuse the kitties if they're if the size and the shape were the same. Yeah, so it's a, this is a this is a hard thing to sell, hard to recommend. Just if you don't want to commit that much money to just for slightly different forms of the same characters and vehicles, then you might just want to select one. So in this case, maybe the single bots would be more recommended than the combiners. It's, I guess it's kind of hard to recommend the combiners because this is like the this is a double p matchup, double pair matchup. I have yet to see if they actually are compatible with the other one, the other Battle Raiden. Imagine if all of this is that complicated. If this is that much complicated, how much more the, would the foreign one be? Or if they were really were like Mass B scale all in one. Yeah, so I guess I'm not sure if it's that impressive to have a two pair combiner when you could just go for the main centerpiece and just get it all four in one. It's a very big unlikely maybe that I might go back and get the season one Glory Alliance toys. That was in 2021, like three years ago, and then like two years later they got season two, and then so I don't know what sort of AliExpress sellers would still carry 2021 season one Glory Alliance toys. And most of them are probably out of stock right now and just really hard to find. I don't know, those toys kind of look cheap anyway, compared to these. As for its intended casual consumer audience, I think parents are gonna find out the hard way that Iron Knights rated is really just pretty much suitable for older kids than the little kids. There might be some broken tears along the way, so I guess you have to really have to be a good judgment call of uh, you know what, getting these kind of newer toys, you know, in as opposed to like the Tobot and Tarbot. But for the kid adult collectors, this should be pretty okay to handle. You guys, once you figure out and know how to transform this, even though that might be a little fiddly and might not just be, just not be a good, like, hand reliever. And of course, I'm not sure if you can really exactly rely on 25% of Kiddos buying toys to carry Iron Knight's ride in Korea. It's hard to imagine that Iron Knight's ride in will do spectacularly well for a new Korean audience. You know, David Toys just, it's more of an import toy company, so it doesn't have that many big original name brands. These toys are complicated and probably not worthy enough of saying goodbye to all other robots as official commercial stated. 
it is kind of hard to find shelf space for them in most retail marts, so looks like currently they're mostly limited to online and specialty toy stores like Toys R Us's. And the animation does get janky at cheap sometimes. It is not exactly the most accessible in-demand content, and also that's kind of hard to access on replay. I'm not sure if any TV streaming service will carry it, any online streaming service. I can actually understand the episodes and not just having to look at Chinese captions. Yeah, even though this might be a bit of a struggle, maybe uphill battle for an all new thing to compete with Korean Transformer toys, I hope they do well enough, just sustainable enough so they can continue importing and localizing another season and another season's worth of toys over here. Yeah, this was just like one half of Iron Knight's right, and I'm gonna take a short break before I review the other half of Cannon and God Gun.